Hi guys! I am wishing you merry everything and happy always. I'm so excited to be able to be a part of this event again this year. So grateful to Pippa for all the hard work she puts into um, behind the scenes, setting this up, preparing, preparing her thumbnails. She just does so much work and I'm so glad that there is this event for the second year in a row for us all to gather together at Christmas or you know the day after Christmas maybe watch these videos later just to be able to have a format and a way for us to all share our holiday together as a community whichever way we do that no matter when we watch these videos it's just a really special thing to be able to be involved with and I'm so honored to be able to do it so let's do a little bit of a coffee with Karen. In this case, hot cocoa with Karen. So grab a nice beverage of some kind. I am going to be using this Frosty the Snowman mug just to try and get myself into the mood. Um, I'm actually going to be drinking some... Um, vanilla walnut coffee with some Godiva hot chocolate in it so it's going to be super yummy. So why don't you grab a nice beverage and let's drop some drills hopefully on our canvases and not on the floor. Okay I need a good sip of this wonderful concoction. All right so I am filming this on December 5th, of course, Sunday, December 5th. By the time you see this, it will be Christmas Eve. Um, while we're doing the premiere, I will probably be at my daughter's, hopefully if everything goes to plan, um, in Christmas jammies, snuggled up with my grandkids maybe, maybe my daughter will be in the room and we'll watch this premiere together. Um, I'm sure if we do, she'll probably, you know, poke some gentle fun at me. She loves to kind of, you know, t troll me as far as it comes to these videos I make. She says I, I, I'm not, I don't act like myself. I, I don't get that. I mean, this is just one aspect of my life, one aspect of, of Karen. So she loves to give me a hard time though, and that's okay. But when I started thinking about doing this whip and chat, for this premiere, I thought, what should I work on? Like I said, it's Sunday, December 5th, um, and I'm in a little bit of a spot. I mean, gosh, you guys, what a year we have all been through. 2020 has been something else. Um, here in the state of California, as of 12 p.m. this today, this afternoon, morning, however you want to look at that, we have gone back into safer at home lockdown in our county. So that means lots of things are closing. They're recommended that they're recommending that no one except for essential workers, which I happen to be, um, go out. Um, so, you know, it's, it's been a bit of a year and this year I, I have to admit, um, more so than a lot of years in the, in the past, it's been a little bit hard for me to, you know, find my Christmas spirit, my Christmas mojo. So when I thought about what I wanted to work on, you know, I don't know about for you. I mean, like I said, it's when we're going to be watching this, it'll be December 24th. So hopefully we'll all be in a very festive spirit, but maybe not. I mean, this has been a rough year and if we're not feeling it, that's okay too. So I thought that this canvas that I got from CC Custom Prints was perfect for the way I'm feeling right now currently and for this year of 2020. Um, it says Resting Grinch Face. It's a tiny little snack size um, canvas and I thought this would be fun to work on um, during our Christmas premiere. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to work on the Grinch face, I think, to begin with. One of the things I love about um, 
CC Custom Prints is the way she bags her drills. Um, which I don't do very often, but on these smaller pieces, because she has them labeled so clearly, I just work on one color at a time using the symbols rather than the numbers. And I almost always use numbers, especially on, but especially for this, you know, little ones like this, this particular canvas only has 13 colors. So it's really simple, you know, and on these canvases that she does, an awful lot of them is background. So it's pretty easy just to do one color at a time and put those drills to the side and move on to the next. But that's not normally how I work on a diamond painting. But that's what I'm going to do with this one. So yeah, um, you know, this is, like I said, this has been a year for all of us, you know, and it, I think it's super is important that we all do what we can to keep our spirits up and you know just be cheerful and think of others that's why this Christmas premiere is such a gift and I think such a wonderful thing that the diamond painting community comes together and does every year because well for the last two years in a row anyway because it's a way for us, like I said, for us to all hang out together, spend, a, you know, even just a little bit of our holiday together as a community, um, you know, and just make sure that maybe people that don't have their families with them, especially this year, there's going to be a lot more. I'm sticking to this canvas. Oh, my goodness. This year, there's going to be a lot more people that are not able to be with their families, maybe feeling... <clears throat> A little more down than normal and if that's you know where someone's at like I said that's okay it's all right to feel that way in a year the holidays can be really tough for people but especially this year and you know if you're feeling a bit grinchy that's okay um I've as I said I've struggled with it myself a bit this year um, one of the things that I talk about a lot, um, you know, I say it sometimes on my channel, in my work with um, clients who have substance use disorders or are experiencing homelessness, one of the things that I, I say all the time is no matter what we're going through, one of the things that will help us to get through it is to take some brief breaks from anything that's bothering us, some breaks from our own problems, and to just kind of take some time to focus on others. And that's something that I really, really try, you know, with varying levels of success, of course, to practice in my own life. So when I thought about what I wanted to do, what I wanted this whip and chat for the Christmas, Christmas premiere to look look like. Um, I just wanted to be sure that I took some time to honor that this has been a tough year for everybody. Like I said, hopefully we're all feeling really, really festive. But just to acknowledge that even if we're not, that's okay. But still, it's absolutely true that if we are, you know, not feeling um, the most festive or you know, we're going through something, or our family's not with us, if we can find some ways, even just for a little while, to think about other people, put the focus on others, um, it just really helps us to feel better, because no matter what we're going through, there's always someone who's going through something worse. And of course, I'm very lucky Almost all of you know this, but because this uh, the type of event this is, it's possible there may be people that are watching this premiere either tonight or somewhere down the road that um, have never watched my channel. <clears throat> so just in case you don't know, let me grab a little sip of my cocoa, my poor man's uh, mocha. Just in case you don't know me. I just want to let you know that um, I am very lucky, I'm very blessed to be the live on site resident manager 
of a family transitional homeless shelter. And so we are a program where people that are experiencing homelessness can um, apply to our program, stay here from anywhere from four months to a year, get their lives back together, um, and you know, hopefully move on to better jobs, a home of their own, things like that. We are a family program and we have a application and a uh, scale that's used here in the state of California to rate applicants based on the severity of, our, of need. And because we're a family transitional homeless shelter, people who have children are going to rank a little bit higher on that scale of need than someone who doesn't have children. We do take singles um, here at this house. We also have another house for single men, which is only single men, college age men. But we do take single families here if we have the space and the openings. But as I said, the people with children are going to, um, you know, rank just a little bit higher on that scale. So we don't get a whole lot of singles right now. We do have one person here um, who does not have her children, but the rest are all families. So at any given time, we can have up to 30 children here. I joke all the time and say, um, I and I live on site. I have a little studio apartment here, and I live here with my 14-year-old grandson, and we're making it work. It's working fine for us. Um, but I, I joke all the time that I truly am that old woman that lived in the shoe because there's up to 30 kids here. And yeah, sometimes I really don't know what to do. We have 12 family rooms, 13 including mine. And hang on a second, I'm going to have another sip of my coffee. The rooms are all varying sizes and have, so because of that, have varying um, numbers of children in them. So it's a real fun, sometimes challenging job, and um, there's a lot of awesome things I get to do, like run a diamond painting program with the um, with the residents. I'm in charge of all the decor here at the house, so I get to do lots of fun things with all the holiday decor. I have an entire um, decoration shed with you know items to choose from. We get new things donated all the time. So I get to, you know, decorate all of that. It's a lot of work, but it is one of those things that helps me to feel festive and helps me to kind of get out of myself um, every year. So one of the things that I thought we could do is something that I have been threatening to do for a quite some time now, ever since I started my channel, really. I know that people are, are really curious and they have a lot of questions and about how this program works, what it's like, what my role here is. So for quite some time, like I said, ever since I started my channel, I have been considering taking a tour of the entire uh, facility, the entire homeless shelter. So I decided that it was finally time to make that happen. So I think that we should get out of our resting Grinch face mode if we're there. And like I said, take just a few minutes on this Christmas Eve to focus on others. And, you know, to take a little tour of the shelter and maybe just satisfy some of your curiosity if you've been around for a while or if you're just curious what a you know, our family transitional homeless shelter looks like. So what do you think? I think we should do it. Okay, you ready? I am. Okay, let's go. Okay, you guys, I have been threatening to do this for quite some time. Take you on a shelter tour. It's a nice, quiet day. We just finished Sunday deep clean. Hardly any of the residents are home. So now's a great time to do this. So let's go. Hopefully I can do this without making you too seasick. Okay. Mm. 
This is our main office and reception area. So when a new resident comes into the house, this would be the door that they would enter through and they would come into here. There's some boxes and stuff. It's pretty, pretty common that deliveries come on the weekends. So those will be put wherever they need to go over the, the course of the week. There's our reception desk. We have two case managers office. Our program director is in that office. That's case managers and day staff. Um, here at the reception desk is primarily where the resident managers do their shifts from. So yeah, so this is just what a resident would encounter when they first come into the shelter. Look back behind there, a little coffee station, little nativity scene, and yeah, more boxes, more things that got delivered. Takes a lot of stuff to keep this place functioning. So this door leads to our main house. Here on this wall, we have some resident success stories. Down, right down there, that door that you see, that's a, one of our resident rooms. We have a little timeout bench here. The parents put their kids on that bench quite frequently. Oh, look at that. Who did that diamond painting? I wonder who created that one. Huh, was probably me. Okay, so we call this our side house. On our side house, we have four rooms. So that you saw one there. Coming down this hallway are two more. Sorry about that. I ran into a resident, so I needed to pause. But as we walk down this hallway, we come to our side house living room. So this is where they can hang out with their kids, let their kids play with their toys, watch TV, all of that kind of stuff. Down here we have the fourth resident room. And coming down this hallway here, we have a bathroom with a shower. It's got a shower in it and, you know, all of the normal things that a bathroom would have. It's so clean in here, you guys. I wish I had smell -o vision so you could smell how wonderful this place smells. So clean. They do such a great job keeping it clean. Right here, we have our second bathroom on this side. Again, you know, basically everything that they would need is right here. And then here, they have a shower as well. It's kind of close quarters in here, so hard to show you everything at once. So we'll come back through here and we'll go into our side house kitchen. Now this kitchen is for the residents that live on this side. This is their kitchen area. That's their refrigerator. So it's their community refrigerator. So inside would be, you know, extra things, uh, milk, things that are donated, produce, stuff like that. Anyone from either side of the house can take anything out of that refrigerator. Over here, we have a second community refrigerator. We actually put all the dairy pot products, milk, stuff like that in there. Um, and again, anybody on either side of the house can come, um, you know, grab that stuff and put it into their own refrigerator. Now, these refrigerators are for the residents on this side. Um, K gets our larger rooms, so they get their own refrigerator. L and N share. And M, again, has their own refrigerator. Got a nice table and, you know, stuff that they might need for the kids. Anything that's out on that counter back there is community food. And again, anybody can take it. Each resident has their own cabinet. Um, and those cabinets, one, two, three, four, are all labeled. If we come over here... On this side, we have all the cabinets that are up there. That's all community food. So up there we have, you know, dry foods. Let's see. We have the dry foods, canned foods, things like that. So again, anybody that needs that can come and get it and put it in their own cabinet, their own personal cabinet. And then... Over here, of course, they have two dishwashers and their sink, coffee pot, toaster, toaster oven. You know, basically 
a nice little kitchen. The residents do such a great job keeping it clean. We do deep clean on Saturdays and they do chores um, six nights a week um, from 7 to 1030. It doesn't take them the whole time, but they have to complete them during that, you know, during that time frame when staff's here. So we've got a bulletin board with information they might need, you know, all the stuff you need, like an iron, an ironing board, and, you know, everybody has a bag of bags, right? We need those. We all need those. So if we go right through this door here, we come out into one of the kids' favorite areas, and that's our playground. So we have a really nice playground out here for the kids to be able to play on. Um, it's got the, you know, soft padding stuff to keep them safe. Lots of little toys. There's a nice little bench for the parents to hang out on. You know, all of this stuff that kids might want and need. Uh, during the summer when it's hot here in California, the parents, you know, hang out at these picnic tables and watch the kids play. Use the umbrellas to stay a little bit cooler. We've got little ride-on toys here. So, yeah, we've got lots of good stuff to keep all the kids occupied. Then, of course, it takes lots of trash cans for a house with this many people living in it. Over on this side, we have bikes for the bigger kids, um, scooters, you know, those kinds of things. That's That dolly is like one of my favorite items. I use that all the time around here. And then, you know, just storage and our recycling bins and yard waste bins. That's a big storage area for all of our household storage and just projects that are going on. So that's our side yard. We call this the side yard. And the residents are in charge of keeping this, you know, clean, tidy, keeping the toys put away, all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, this is a really popular area with the kids. So, let's go take a look at the main house. Okay, so this is our main parking lot in front of the shelter. Um, so, this is where the residents park, and this would be where they would come home. This is the way that they enter the house. This is our front yard area um, and entrance. You may have seen this before, but you know, we've got picnic tables and play things and this. Let me see if I can show you this. Look at this playhouse. I'm gonna do it this kind of from an angle because it's got some advertising on it. I'm not sure you might be able to spot it right now. I don't know. But anyway, this playhouse is massive and huge. I'm just gonna show it. It was just donated to us yesterday. We had a big ceremony um, today, this morning, um, during childcare, I was able to do a big reveal with the kids. It's so cool in there. Um, I might do a tour with you guys with the Playhouse at some point. That's a video maybe for another day. But anyway, the residents would come in here. Oh, look, right over there, see the wrapped gate? That's Miss Karen's entrance. That's my entrance into my yard and my back patio area. All of those lights um, were hung by Wyatt, um, my 14-year-old grandson. They're a little bit droopy in places, but hey, they're up and they look gorgeous at night. So the residents come in through this way. There's our, some of our outdoor decorations. And then this is their door. And there's a keypad lock. And then you come into what we call our main living room. Now you may have seen this in some of my videos too. As you can see, this is where we do all of our diamond painting together. I was going to put that table back together and I forgot. It has a beautiful tablecloth that's on it with a centerpiece. But here's a look 
at our Christmas decorations that we have this year. I had lots of fun putting all of this together. So, like I said, this is our main living room. So this is where they come and we do things like hanging out together, doing diamond painting. Um, sometimes, you know, pre-COVID time, they would have um, tutors that would come and work with the kids and they would sit out here and work on this table. That's little corner piece is one of my favorite things. Um, most of that is up all year round. Right through that door is the side house that we were in before. Right through here we have our computer lab. So they've got computers, printers, everything that they need to, you know, take care of business because they're really busy working hard doing and doing a great job putting their lives back together. And we've got lots of games and books and for the families to play with, we've got, you know, movies, um, magazines, all kinds of stuff for them to be able to enjoy together as a family. Or by themselves. I don't know. They might read by themselves. Down here, we have a lot of children's books for the little kids. And over here... We have books for the preteens and the adults, some paperwork that the residents need on a fairly regular basis. They do have a sign in, sign out book so that we, you know, know when they're coming and going. Um, you know, some artwork. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much this area. So let's go take a look at the main kitchen. Okay, in between those clips, I did take the time to put the table back together, put everything away so that you could get the full experience. I really pride myself every day, but, you know, at the holidays especially, trying to make this place festive and fun, but also to, you know, make it really classy and, um, you know, nice for the residents given whatever it is that I have to work with. Oh my goodness, what's that underneath that Christmas tree? Looks like a diamond painting to me. So one of the things I should have said is the reason that we call this our main house is because this is the original um, farmhouse from that door and all of the rest of what you're gonna see right now that this program was started out in. Um, this house was purchased by the church next door and they started this program 30 years ago. This last year we did, um, you know, form our own nonprofit, so we're no longer associated with the church, but the, ch the Presbyterian Church uh, next to us bought this farmhouse, bought the piece of property, and started this program 30 years ago with a pregnant woman and her husband that were living in the park. And hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of families have been through here since then. We are able to take um, 12 or 12 families at a time. So we have 12 families that live here at any given time and up to 30 children. So yes, I'm the old woman that lived in a shoe, but thankfully it's a really big shoe. Speaking of shoes, you may hear some banging upstairs. There's some little guys up there playing, and that's what little kids do. They they play, they bang, they jump on floors, and they get to do that. So, But anyway, let's go take a look at our main kitchen. So this is our main kitchen. It's a really, really big room. Um, there you have all of the resident um, refrigerators. On this side of the house, um, there are nine resident rooms, so they do have to share refrigerators. Um, I may have counted wrong. Eight refrigerator, uh, eight resident rooms. Yeah, there's eight resident rooms plus my room. My room's the ninth. So they've got a really nice, really big kitchen. Again, two dishwashers, 
Um, they each have their own personal cabinets down on the lower cabinets, both sides of the house. Oh, do you hear that banging? I do. I don't know if that'll come through. All of these lower cabinets and stuff are, you know, where they store their pots and pans and cooking utensils. They have the same setup on the other side where everything that's, um, you know, stored underneath is, is for cooking supplies. Um, they, <laughs> I'm sure you guys hear that banging. It's what kids do. You know, and again, they've got ironing boards and recycling bins and all the stuff that they might need. We call this the small living room. Since we already have a living room called the main living room, we call this a small living room. But this is the living room that the residents on this side of the house can hang out with their kids. If the residents from separate sides of the house want to hang out together, they need to go to a common area like the main living room and hang out there. Um, we try to keep the two house, sides of the house separate. So up those stairs, we do have seven of the eight um, resident rooms that are on this side of the house. We have one resident room right here. And coming down this hallway, that door that you see right there, that's where Miss Karen lives. Oh, that's really flashing. I don't know why. Got a little bit of festiveness. That's not really a Christmas tree farm. That's actually Miss Karen's room. So we have a storage closet right here. And in that storage closet, we store all our paper products and cleaning supplies that we use for the house. Okay, so this is one of two bathrooms on this side of the house. There's one right above it um, for the upstairs that's pretty much the same. They do on this side of the house, they have bathtubs. So if anybody from the main house wants to come over and take a bath or bathe their children, they're allowed to come over here to use these bathtubs. So, you know, just nice bathrooms on this side. Um, so very cool. You know, just your basic bathroom. Again, they keep it so clean. It's amazing. I wish you guys could just experience how fresh it smells in here from all these cleaning supplies. I love it. So that's this bathroom. And then if we come back down this hallway, And go right through this door here. We'll enter our backyard, which is one of also one of my favorite areas of the house. So if we come right down these stairs or the ramp and come this way, we have a beautiful, we are in Southern California, so we have a beautiful citrus tree. We have what we call the Zen Garden, which, you know, is just a nice little patio area where they can sit, relax. I find residents out here pretty frequently having coffee, just enjoying their day. So we call this a Zen Garden. And then right here, we have our laundry room. So we do have on-site laundry for them. Um, we have two washers and two dryers. They're able to, you know, come and do their laundry. This is the laundry room I use as well. And then coming right up here, we have our backyard area, which quite honestly doesn't get used a whole lot. We've got a little bit of, oh, I need to fix that. A little bit of planting, so beautiful plumeria bush which is in bloom right now. So it gotta love Southern California in December, right? You know, that gate right there goes to my yard. That required another edit. This is gonna be fun to try and put together, but there's one more area I wanted to show you. We call this our smokers area. So we do have smokers in the house. So this is where they come to be able to have a cigarette if they smoke um, and we also have our community barbecue here so that they are able to barbecue you know and and benches and just a, a nice little area for them to set in not be near any doors or windows and um, yeah just hang out
And then if we go right through this gate here, we are back in the playground. And that's actually the end of our tour. So that's the shelter, you guys. What do you think? Pretty nice, right? Probably, at least I would hope, not exactly what you would imagine when you would imagine someone being in a shelter. You know, like I said, we all kind of really pride ourselves around here. Um, in trying to make this really, oops, there we go, I'm trying to make this really nice for the residents, um, keep it clean, um, we want this to feel like a home, and I think for the most part, we're pretty successful, so we've done the entire loop, we're coming back down, Again, there's the, the main house. This area was all built on at some point. I'm not sure when they built this on. Here's a little motivation. I put this up here a couple of years ago. We changed the quote out every week to, you know, just to give them some motivation. So we're back where we started, you guys. So that's it. That's the shelter tour. Oh, look. There is another diamond painting that was actually completed and donated back to us from by one of our residents. So, pretty special place. Lots of awards. Lots of good has been done in these two buildings. So, that's pretty much it, you guys. We're done with our tour. Okay, so what did you guys think? I love taking people on tours through the shelter here. Their reaction is usually two things. First of all, they're amazed by how clean it is. And second of all, it just does not fit their pictures of what they think a shelter is going to be like. I think people picture a shelter as being like, you know, big warehouse like rooms with cots and you know, and that's not the type of shelter we are. It's really got a homey vibe. We work really hard to keep it that way. I'm so super proud to be able to be a part of it. I came down here three years ago, three and a half years ago, from Washington. I interviewed, I found the job online and interviewed up in Washington. They flew me down in, uh, to do an interview, offered me a position. Um, I gave two weeks notice to my job where I was an executive director for a treatment program housing division and um, took this job so I could be closer to my daughter and my grandkids. Very grateful for everything I've got to experience while I've been here. Now don't get me wrong, it's not always the easiest job in the world. Um, this population you know, comes here because, you know, they're, they've been struggling with something, whether it's domestic violence, substance abuse, um, you know, a run of, of misfortune or financial stress of some kind, divorce, all kinds of reasons. So it can be, it can be pretty tough sometimes. You probably were able to tell that one of my very favorite parts about this program is the kids. I love working with the kids. They come in and they're usually pretty stressed, maybe a little bit traumatized, because they've been living in some stressful, chaotic conditions. And it's wonderful to see them come into this program and begin to grow, blossom as they, you know, get some stability, some structure. We have, you know, because we have rules for the parents that they must follow. We also have rules and structure for the kids, like they have a bedtime, um, if it's, you know, becoming a problem, we have their parents limit their use of electronics as far as like, you know, maybe their electronics need to be turned off at, at nine o'clock so that they can get some rest, you know, things like that. So they're given a lot of structure. Their parents are given a lot of parenting skills and a lot of help 
with those kinds of issues and you know it's just pretty amazing so um, I'm really proud of this place <clears throat> really lucky to get to be a part of it you may notice that this looks a little bit different than when before we took the tour this video because I had to do so many different pieces of it make sure that I didn't have any residents in the shot things like that I had to edit this piece by piece I also had to make sure that all of our, um, that, because, that because there were so many pieces that the timing turns out right so I can get this as close to 10 minutes as possible. So um, yeah, so while I was editing, I worked on a little bit of this hoping that I could get myself to a place where I wouldn't stick to this canvas. So, so bad because let me tell you this canvas is sticky so I did do that I did start some of this outline on the Grinch's face isn't he just looking adorable yeah this one's a lot of fun to work on I'm having a lot of fun with him today so now that we've taken a tour and because this is Christmas and it's Christmas Eve you're probably wondering what Christmas looks like for the kids and the families here at his house um, it re we really are blessed. We're a pretty well-known program here in the area. So a lot of people, in fact, so many people that we normally, um, well, at least this year anyway, we're having to t turn um, donors away. What we do is with the kids, we have them fill out a wish list with um, uh, their clothing sizes, their shoe sizes, um, some of their interests, and a toy that they're, you know, hoping to receive. In years past, we had a different program director, and she would not limit the amount that the donors were able to give, or the um, amount of, of, you know, people we allowed to, to do sponsorships. So it became quite overwhelming for the staff and for the parents and ultimately I think not necessarily a positive thing in the long run for the kids because people are so generous this time of year and there are so many people out there that want to help that we would just get these massive donations of gift items for the kids and we would make sure the kids got them all but their their rooms would just be like overrun with gifts this year um, the new dr program director has really really limited it to um, two toys an item of clothing and a pair of shoes we did make sure that all of the kids were did receive new shoes um, and we Already, all of the kids have been sponsored. We will be wrapping the gifts um, so that the parents don't even have to worry about that. And then on Christmas Eve, the residents, about mm, 1030 or so, will come to the main office. And while we are, um, the staff is in there, we will be passing out those gifts and the kids will, you know, receive those items and the parents will be able to either give those kids the gifts and, you know, tell them they're from Santa or they'll be able to, um, you know, say they're from them, whichever they, they choose. I think it's better the way we're doing it this year because the kids are not receiving so much that the parents are going to have a hard time repeating that experience next year when they're no longer in our program so so by the time we are all watching this i am sure those gifts will be being distributed to for the kids to wake up to tomorrow morning so that's always a really fun time now as far as the parents um we make sure that you know they have a merry holiday as well um some of you know every year the um like i said there are so many people that want to get involved and donate once the children's wish lists have all been fulfilled um we will start requesting from people 
gift cards and we get you know donations of gift cards for things like um, gas grocery stores and usually Starbucks so usually every year the parents get those as well as there's always some gift items like you know sometimes pajamas or makeup for the moms um, you know there a lot of stuff gets donated so that we're able to to put together um, packages for them too that's always kind of one of my favorite things because every year the parents know that the kids Christmas is going to be taken care of because oh, I am just sticking to this thing like no other but the parents know that their Christmas is going to be the kids' Christmas is going to be taken care of because we require them to you know have jobs this is a working program so they have to have jobs and they have to be paying their bills um, paying any back debt maybe paying off past evictions, you know, doing things to raise their credit score so that they're able to find permanent housing. Um, so they have to really, they're really on strict budgets. So they know we're going to take care of the kids Christmas, but they don't necessarily realize that they're going to be receiving anything. So they're always really surprised. So that's always a really fun part of Christmas here is is being able to give those gifts to the parents as well so that's really fun it's it's really wonderful that the community comes together and and does that for us we do have you know corporate um, sponsors and donors as well some civics group civic groups like Kiwanis Club places like that I mean so many pla different places. I don't really work with the fundraising, so I don't really always know where all of it's coming from. I just get to, you know, experience it all coming in. And we're, you know, and it's wonderful that we get to do it. I do have to say, though, it, like I said, this is, it gets a little overwhelming for us staff sometimes. It's a lot of work to put together the holidays here for everyone um it like wrapping the gifts you know like i said there's 30 kids here um one of the things that i didn't get to show you of course in the housing tour was the the bedrooms because right now we're full which is a good thing we don't like to have rooms standing empty with nobody in them because then people aren't getting helped but right now all of our rooms are full um, and the rooms are really nice too. In all of the rooms, um, they have most of them, except there's a one or two small, kind of small rooms for just like a one parent and a child. But the rooms have um, all have bunk beds. Um, sometimes two sets of bunk beds. We have trundles under all of the bunks. So the largest rooms can hold six people and, uh, you know, we put porta cribs in them, um, for the, sometimes for babies. So the largest rooms can hold about six people and the smallest room holds two, but the rooms are really nice too. Um, in those rooms, uh, as each set of residents moves in, they are giving given new sheets, pillowcases, pillows, blankets, um, comforters, and towels. All of them brand new. They get to take all of it with them when they leave our program for their, you know, permanent housing, except for the blankets. The blankets we do wash and and reuse, but all of the rest of it, including the comforters. They're able to take with them when they go to, you know, give them a good start when they when they leave this program. We very often give them, you know, care packages of things like cleaning supplies, paper products, toilet paper, paper towels, you know, stuff like that to take with them to get them off to a good start as well. So um, the rooms are really nice, really homey. 
Um, they look good. They're nice and clean. You know, we clean them really well in between each residence, so the rooms are nice, too. But because those rooms, you know, like I said, some of them are quite large. This is this is a very large house. I don't necessarily even think my video showing you those rooms when I was editing, I don't think it necessarily does those rooms justice as far as, as to how large they are. So especially this farmhouse side, it's, it's big. You look at it from the outside, um, especially from a side view, and it's, it's pretty massive, pretty large place. But anyway, because those rooms hold, you know, up to 30 kids, you can probably imagine um, us getting all of those gifts organized, um, wrapped. It's it's quite the quite the labor intensive um, production to get done. Uh, the way we do that is we do get all of the staff together as well as some volunteers, and we have a wrapping day and we get everything all wrapped at once and put into, um, I mean, it's, it's not that fancy, but big black trash bags with the family's name on it so that we're able to easily distribute those gifts on Christmas Eve. So, it, like I said, it's, we love doing it. We're glad we're able to do it for the kids and the families, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And this is a real tough time of year for the families, too. You know, there's a lot of stress, um, particularly this year with the whole COVID thing. Now that we're back in lockdown, I'm really afraid that some of the parents here are very likely to, you know, have their hours cut or lose their jobs. Right now, here in California, kids are still going to school um, a few days a week, but who knows if that could change as well. So, you know, I think we're coming into a very high stress. Because we are back down in, back in lockdown, the parents um, have all received emails. We're back on restrictions to where we're asking them not to gather in any of the common areas, including those kitchens. We're asking them to cook and eat one family at a time and then to return to their rooms um, so that we limit everybody's exposure as much as possible. Of course, we're mandating that masks have to be worn at all times um, here at the shelter. So. Yeah, it's, hopefully it's going to be a wonderful Christmas season for everybody, even if there are some additional challenges this year, and it looks just a little bit different than it normally does. Hopefully we will all get through it just fine, and, um, you know, next year will be different, um, Personally, I think we will, may have a little ways to go before things get back to what we could call normal or, you know, conditions that are pre-COVID, but um, hopefully that will be sooner rather than later, and um, hopefully 2021, at, at least at some point during that calendar year, things will get much better and kind of get back to normal. and. In the meantime, we all just got to keep our spirits high and just try to do what we can to take care of our mental health and, you know, be, be cognizant of the fact that everybody's going through something. So, you know, trying to be loving, patient, and tolerant with all of those around us. I know that's what we hear at the shelter have to do on a regular basis because like I said don't get me wrong it's not you know it's definitely I'm sliding out of frame there it's de it's not all sweetness and light you know yes I get to do a lot of wonderful things um, I'm very grateful but also 
you know there's there's a lot of times where we have some some tough moments here at the shelter um i've experienced a lot of moments of joy but um there have also been a lot of moments here that would you know break someone's heart so it's uh I'm not, a get, don't get me wrong, I'm not always sweetness and light. Um, sometimes I have to be the enforcer and have to keep people accountable and on track for, on track for what they need to do. So, and you know, the residents are not always, not always 100% happy with me, but I try to, re to remind myself on a fairly you know frequent basis if <clears throat> there is moments where their behavior seems like you know they're they're struggling they're you know um, acting out a little bit I try to remind myself that it's not about me um, they and definitely that they are not bad people they're just having a bad day and um you know it's not not always for me to be the if i if i'm the most popular person in the house i'm probably not doing my job so there are those moments when it gets to be you know a bit intense but that's just that's just kind of the way it goes it's just kind of what we do here so um it's definitely definitely worth doing. Um, I'm very grateful that I have been able to be a part of this program. And I'm really grateful that I was able to be a part of this this uh, Christmas premiere project too. I'm so grateful that Pippa included me again for the second year. I'm very grateful that you were willing to spend a little bit of your holiday with me. I'm probably pretty close to um, at the end of my allotted time, so I should let you go. But before I do, I do want to remind you that we can change lives one drill at a time, even if it's just our own. Because when we change our lives, the entire world around us is going to start to change. And I know that's true here at his house. So that's it. If you're new here, love to have you hit like and subscribe to be notified when I put up videos. You'll see lots more stuff about the diamond painting program I do here at the house with the residents and stuff that I'm doing with my personal diamond painting and just all kinds of, of stuff. So would love to have you join us. And I guess I'll let you go, but I just want to wish you merry everything and happy always. I'll see you guys really soon.